Assalamu alaikum. The Talmud teaches Jews to judge by other than that which Allah sent down, to abandon the judgment, the ruling that Allah sent, and to replace it and bring forth and follow a different judgment. So um, there are many ways through which the Talmud does this. In this video, we'll look at how it does this by uh, how it treats the ruling of eye for an eye, and it replaces it and changes it uh, to a different ruling. So um, Leviticus 24, if you go to the Torah, it's pretty obvious there's the ruling of eye for eye is there. So let's look at that. And then we'll look at how the Talmud changes this. Anyone who takes the life of a human being is to be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution, life for life. Anyone who injures their neighbor is to be injured in the same manner. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The one who has inflicted the injury must suffer the same injury. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever kills a human being is to be put to death. You are to have the same law for the foreigner and the native born. I am the Lord your God. It's repeated in Exodus. But if there is harm, then you shall pay life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. It's also in Deuteronomy. Your eye shall not pity. It shall be life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. And so, of course, the Talmud does not like this. They uh, replace the judgment of eye for eye and they bring forth their own judgment, which is that you have to pay a monetary compensation. So the Mishnah says one who injures another is liable uh, for that injury due to five types. He must pay for the damage, for pain, for medical costs, for loss of livelihood, and for humiliation. But then the Gemara says, well, why? Uh, why does the Mishnah take for granted the fact that one who caused injury is liable to, get, to pay compensation to the injured party when the merciful one states, an eye for an eye, you might say that this means that the one who caused injury shall lose an actual eye rather than pay money. And then look, the same Gemara responds by saying that interpretation should not enter your mind. So the idea that it says what it literally says, it, sh it should not even enter your mind, right? And so this is actually a very long passage in the Talmud. I've just quoted a little bit, but all of it is, the, is them coping and somehow saying that eye for eye, tooth for tooth, doesn't mean what it actually says. Somehow trying to prove that no, it means you have to pay money, right? So for, here, uh, so for example, here they say eye for eye, tooth for tooth, just as he has given blemish to a person, so shall it be given unto him and learn from the use of the word given that the verse is referring to money somehow right and so they they try and also use this idea that it says one who strikes an animal mortally shall pay its compensation and then it says uh, life for life and they say oh therefore when it says eye for eye it also must mean money ignoring the fact that it literally says anyone who injures their neighbor is to be injured in the same manner right and so when it says all this fracture for fracture it says the one who has inflicted the injury must suffer the same injury. And the fact that it says, whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever kills a human being is to be put to death, clearly dis making a distinction between the two, right? So essentially, they didn't like the ruling of God, so they tried to bring their own ruling. So the rabbis at Aish.com, they say, again, that the Talmud uh, tries to somehow show that eye for eye is not to be taken literally, right? Uh, showing one should not even entertain the thought that eye for eye is to be taken literally. Then they see the rabbis like Maimonides tried to prove this. And then here they say the key principle is that the Torah cannot and was not meant to be understood literally. So what it actually says, it doesn't mean, right? So now let's look at what a rabbi says. Again, the Torah says an eye for an eye. There are at least three problems with that. Number one, for a court to rip out someone's eye or chop off their hand would be a disgusting, barbaric act. Number two, it certainly would not help the victim. And number three, it would not be equitable. If the court penalizes the attacker by doing exactly what he or she did to the victim, it would not be a fair kind of punishment. Let's give a few examples. What if the victim was a fully sighted person and the attacker pokes out one of their eyes. But the attacker was someone that only had one eye to begin with, a one-eyed attacker. And now the court's going to poke out their one remaining eye. Well, that's not fair, because the victim can still see pretty well out of one eye. But with no eyes left, the attacker can't see at all. So for those three reasons, and possibly more, to impose the same penalty that the attacker in, in, inflicted on the victim is just ridiculous. 
And that's why the Torah says in the oral Torah, you do not poke out someone's eye. If the intention of God all along was that the attacker pay money, then why didn't the written text of the Torah just say that? And I believe the reason is that if the Torah had written that, it would have been incredibly crass. It's like saying, if you rip out someone's eye, write a check. Now, the Jews in Arabia at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they had a very similar attitude. They didn't like the punishments in the Torah. They thought uh, they were too harsh. And so they used to try and replace them with lighter punishments. And they also used to try and come to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for judgment instead of judging by that which was within the Torah because they thought the Prophet would prescribe a lighter punishment even though they didn't believe in him. And so Allah sent down فَلَا تَخْشَوْا النَّاسَ وَاخْشَوْنْ وَلَا تَشْتَرُوا بِآيَاتِي ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ وَكَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهَا أَنَّ النفس بالنفس والعين بالعين والأنف بالأنف والأذن بالأذن والسن بالسن والجروح قصاص فمن تصدق به فهو كفارة له ومن لم يحكم بما أنزل الله فأولئك هم الظالمون Also Allah said uh, in the same surah أفحكم الجاهلية يبغون ومن أحسن من الله حكما لقوم يوقنون also, Allah mentioned that uh, going to others for judgment besides Allah, يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى التَّاغُوتِ وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ They desire uh, or they intend to refer legislation to Taghut while they were commanded to reject it, to disbelieve in it. Taghut is anything that is worshipped besides Allah that likes to be worshipped. And uh, as Allah mentioned here, أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالْتَاغُوتِ Have you not seen those who were given a portion of the scripture? They believe in superstition and ta'ghut. 